Hello children. Today we are going to take up one of the simplest yet the most beautiful poem in your class 12 syllabus. My Mother at 66 by Kamla Das. Well, is 66 really an age to worry about? I don't think so. But Kamla Das has written this poem which reflects the theme of advancing age and the fear of losing a dear one and separation from her. So it seems that the poem is actually giving away the anguish of a child. When the child is scared, what would happen if the parent is taken away? So 66 really isn't an age to worry about. A little bit about the poet Kamla Das. Her Malayalam pen name was Madhvi Kutti. She controversially converted to Islam and took over the name Kamala Suraya. She is famous for capturing complexities of human relationships and she has received many literary awards. And here's the poem now. Driving from my parents' home to Cochin last Friday morning, I saw my mother beside me, doze open-mouthed, her face ashen like that of a corpse, and realized with pain that she was as old as she looked, but soon put that thought away, and looked out at young trees printing, merry children spilling out of their homes. But after the airport security check, standing a few yards away, I looked again at her worn, pale as a late winter's moon and felt that old familiar ache. My child was here, but all I said was, see you soon, Amma. All I did was smile and smile and smile. So that's the poem for you. As you can see, I have highlighted in different colors certain phrases. These are important phrases because they have showcased the poetic devices that Kamla Das has used in the poem and it will help you in the better understanding of the poem. So first let's look at the point wise summary. The poet was driving from her parents home to Cochin airport from where she was to take the flight when she suddenly notices her mother who was sleeping in the car beside her. And when she looks at her mother, it appears as if her mother resembled a dead person. And that's why she uses the simile, her face ashen like that of a corpse. And it is, you know, at this moment, the thought or you can say the fear crosses the mind of the poet that her mother was really very old and at her age you could not say anything anything could happen and that's why she says as old as she looked so that painful thought of her mother's death is such that she wants to just put that thought away and therefore she looks outside the car window. So the phrase put that thought away is exactly the pain of losing her mother or the thought about her mother's inevitable impending death. And she wants to put that thought away. Therefore she looks out of the car window. So if you get the question put that thought away, you must explain what it means. When she looks out, she is totally distracted. Why? Because she looks at trees printing, happy children brimming with life. And can you see the contrast? I'll come to that also later. There is contrast in these lines. Okay, I will discuss this in a later slide. So after the security check, she looks at her mother. And again, she feels that she was looking very pale, colorless, just like the winter moon. And again, there's a simile where she says, pale as a late winter's moon. So if you have seen late winter's moon, you would know what I'm talking about. It is pale, it lacks luster. And 
the term winter could also be used because the mother was in the winter of her life so as i always say that man's life can be compared to seasons like you are in the spring of your life isn't it and here the mother has been shown as being in the winter of her life the last stage of her life okay the childhood fear of losing her mother and the pain of being separated haunts her again and which lines uh, uh talks uh, which line talks about this is familiar ache that childhood fear so now distraught overburdened with sorrow and fear she bids her mother goodbye however she departs on an optimistic note you know she is masking her inner turmoil and she is trying to part on a very hopeful note and here you can see that her smile and smile and smile is kind of a reassurance for her mother as well as she is reassuring herself that they would meet soon so the last and smile and smile and smile basically is to reassure her mother as well as her self now the theme of the poem this can come for two marks so please make a note of it the theme reflects fear of loss or separation from the aging mother the anguish of the daughter over her mother's advancing age and aging is a natural process death is inevitable so remember these three points for your two markers message yes thus as she does this beautifully in most of her works she presents the complex subtleties of human nature again the pain and anguish of a daughter on seeing an aging mother who is tormented by the fear of separation but at the same time she provides reassurance to her mother and herself that all will be well and they will meet soon the poetic devices used in the poem by kamla das are her face ashen like that of a corpse is an example of simile clearly her face which looks like uh, as if it's become very dark ash you know is the color of death children so she is reminded of a corpse when she looks at her mother's dozed off face it's a clear cut simile the next example of simile is as a late winter's moon i've already explained her mother's face she compares to the late winter's moon because of the pale color or the way uh, there is no shine in winter's moon her mother's face also appears like that yes uh, the poem is replete with uh, examples of imagery you have examples like trees sprinting merry children spilling late winter's moon all these are examples of imagery then uh, metaphor merry children spilling is an example of metaphor because it is an indirect comparison and here happy children are brimming with life energy exuberance yes therefore she is comparing children the happiness and energy of children with something which is overflowing or as you can say that it is being compared to Uh, the gushing waters of a stream therefore you can say it is a metaphor indirect comparison then smile and smile and smile is a clear example of repetition the importance of this is that through this repetition the poet is trying to show that she is masking her pain and reassuring her mother young tree sprinting well you know that this is personification because life like qualities of a human being have been imparted to trees but it is also an example of metaphor 
Why? Because trees are being compared to athletes or maybe children who are running. Okay, so it is an example of personification because of the lifelike qualities and metaphor because it is an example of indirect comparison. Contrast. This is what I was talking about. Another very important two marker. What is the contrast that you see in the poem? So you see the contrast specifically in the lines when uh, the poet says and put that thought away. And then she looks at the trees sprinting and merry children spilling. Remember those lines? So the contrast here is between the old age of the mother and the youth of the children. The grim and sad atmosphere inside the car and happy and lively uh, atmosphere outside the car. And third one is that death appears to be looming large in the car, whereas outside children are overflowing with life and brimming with happiness. So death and life. So these are the examples of contrast. But all I said was, See you soon, Amma. Smile and smile and smile. These last four lines are again very important because these are the parting words that the poet says to her mother. These words are expressive of her confusion. And you know, the repetition simply showcases her own fear. And that she's trying to hide behind her smiling face. And as I'm been telling you again and again that she is simply trying to reassure herself as well as her mother. So let's look at some questions as per the latest CBSC format. In the poem My Mother at 66, all that the poet did was smile and smile and smile. Her smile is, what is her smile indicating? It is D, put on to cheer her mother. Then why are the trees described as sprinting? So now if you look at the options, all four appear to be fine. But the most appropriate one would be A because that gives complete answer. You can get this kind of questions also where a reference to context is given like young trees sprinting, merry children spilling. Uh, and then based on that, you, you will get MCQs. So tree sprinting is an example of quickly. Yes, personification because metaphor is not there. So it is personification. Yes, children spilling out is an example of metaphor. The image of merry children has been brought out by the narrator in order to. Yes, part A. How is the imagery of young trees and merry children a contrast to the mother? Again, if you look at the options, all four are not wrong. But the D1 gives you complete answer. It talks about old age. It talks about hopelessness. At the same time, it talks about merry children uh, who are full of youth and hope. Okay. So you get two markers also. Uh, the word limit is 30 to 40 words. Here we have two uh, samples. Why is the mother compared to the late winter's moon? To bring out the similarity of aging and decay, the late winter's moon looks hazy and pale. It lacks luster. It could be a reference to the mother being in the winter of her life. So I've tried to show you how you can put all the points together in 30 to 40 words. What are the two images of youth used by the poet? So you know the two images are young trees and happy children. They are representatives of youth energy life and are in contrast to the pale worn out face of the mother. So that's about it. Thank you and good luck for your exam. God bless.